they play hard. Uh, I do see good defensive speed when you watch their film. Uh, the best thing they do on defense is get the ball back. You know, last year they, they got 21 takeaways on defense. You know, crowd noise would be great to, to be involved in an atmosphere like that. Um, we know that their fans will be loud. And for us, it's uh, something we need. You know, we need to go play on the road and, and play in front of fan base like that. Uh, obviously, we're going to come home after this game for three weeks and then have to go play uh, at Clemson. And that'll be our next time to really have that. So I'm excited we have that challenge in our opener as well. And it's a stadium that NC State has not played well in. You know, as a program, we're one and four in Greenville. Um, and, and so, you know, my last time there, we had 13 penalties and lost in a one possession game. So I know this is a tough place. Trust me, our team knows that as well. It's been a lot of conversation about who we're playing and, and where we're playing. Well, when you talk about it, you recognize it. And two, we're not the same team we were in 2016 either. That was a young football team, uh, really young. You know, all those guys that ended up being NFL players were sophomore starters in that game. We made a lot of immature mistakes. And so I've talked about all of that, you know, with them. So, you know, you recognize it, but you also have to look at who you are. You know, we're a team that can play a lot better than that team did at that time in their career. So we need to, you know, and I think maturity is a big deal on the road. You, you look at your leadership um, and we've got an experienced team that needs to make sure that we're not making it harder than it is to win a football game with pre-snap and post-snap decisions that can, you know, hurt our chances to be successful. Well, you know, he reminded me a lot of uh, guys that I had at Northern Illinois. And, and at that time, you know, we were still trying to find a mobile quarterback because uh, he could run and, and he was tough, you know, similar to Jordan Lynch and Chandler Harnish, two of the guys I had at NIU. And so we liked that about him. We thought we could run, you know, some of the downhill QB runs because he's a 230 pound guy and uh and still have, you know, the drop back pass game that we wanted to have. And so those are the things, you know, as a, he was a 4.0 guy, he's obviously from a football family, had all the right things. And ultimately he chose to stay home, you know, and be a part of their family's legacy at that school and have nothing but respect for him for that. And what makes him good now is, you know, the same things then. He's He was mobile, still is, had a good arm, you know, sees the field, is good on his feet. You know, all those reasons I recruited him then are the same reasons he's a four-year starter for them. The crowd noise is a factor when you're on the road. And and so when we get to play at some place that where that's an element, it tests you. You know, it tests your your focus with your 11 guys on offense. And, you know, um, it tests your your mental maturity when you have opponent opponents fans saying whatever they're going to be saying to you, right? And can you manage yourself in that environment? Because we can't practice that, you know, we can't put people in there yelling at our guys. So, you know, there, there's a hostile part of playing at a stadium, you know, that sells out that has, you know, rowdy students just like ours does, you know. And so it does test you. It tests your leadership. It tests your ability to, to stay focused on the task instead of the surroundings. Um, and they're a good football team. You know, I think it's the best team Coach Houston's had. Uh, he's got a lot of good players back. His staff, you know, has been together a while, and, and they're his kids. He's recruited. So, you know, we're not just playing against uh, some team. I mean, it's a good football team. They were a bowl-eligible team last year, and, and they're better than they were last year because of who they brought back. Well, definitely what's left to be done. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I know what my goals are here, win a championship, you know. And um, so, you know, that's what it's been about since day one. One pack, one goal, United mission to win a championship. You know, it's been since day one, the mission statement of our program and uh, the identity of our team, you know, hard, tough together. And it's been a, a part of our makeup. And, and I think that's very evident when you watch us play that that's branded in us here. You know, um, as far as <clears throat> looking at myself, I absolutely try to get better every year. And, and I think in most cases I have, and I would say, our down year um, that we had a few years back, I, I own that as much as anybody in this building. You know, I didn't do a good enough job having a young team ready to play uh, and then dealing with all the injuries. So I learned from that. And I think it's the biggest thing I can tell you is in, in my 12 years now as a head coach, I, I look at failure as an opportunity to grow. And uh, you can't get better without struggle. You can't.
you know, and nobody likes to hear that, but that's the God's honest truth in life. If you really want to get better, you have to put yourself in very difficult situations to grow. You don't grow much when it's easy. And I've grown a lot, you know, uh, to be able to tell you exactly how probably can't do that. But, you know, when I'm done coaching and maybe I'll be able to do that a lot better when I've had that kind of time to reflect. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's funny. I, I thought about that season this morning for some reason, and uh, I'm thankful that I had to go through it um, because I'm better for having to gone through it and exposed things in our program that, you know, had we not had some of those injuries and we were able to get to a bowl and, and maybe not have to really dissect what's wrong. Um, probably wouldn't be where we're at right now, you know, and so thankful uh, for that, for that year and for Boo allowing me to, to fix what was broken, you know, um, with myself too. And uh, I think all those hard hardships that this team suffered, I think shared adversity is a critical part of a team. You know, it's, it's how you come together. It's, <laughs> You know, going through creating scars, we all have the same scar from 2019. It's a big, ugly one, man, and we remember it for those of us who are here, and we don't want another one like it. And so, yeah, having that shared adversity with those young men that were a part of that failure has allowed us to, to really prevent it from coming back.